Today, we're gonna be talking about a procedure that's gaining a lot of attention in the medical world, the middle meningeal artery embolization. This is a minimally invasive procedure that is helping many patients suffering from chronic subdural hematoma. But don't worry if that sounds complicated because I'm here to explain in simple terms so you can understand what it is, how it works, and if it might be right for you or someone you know. So let's start with a little background. Inside of our skulls, we have something called the middle meningeal artery, which is a small blood vessel that supplies the blood to the outermost layers of the brain called the meninges. When people have a chronic subdural hematoma, which is essentially a buildup of blood between these layers, it can create pressure on the brain and cause symptoms like headaches, confusion, or even difficulty walking or moving. Some patients that have subdural hematomas can be watched. However, over time, 25% of these patients will require treatment. The usual treatment for these hematomas involves surgery to drain the blood and relieve the pressure. While surgery is very effective, it also comes with risks, especially for older patients and those with a more health issue. Also, there is a 25% chance of recurrence after surgery as well. Here is the exciting part. Multiple new studies show that middle meningeal artery embolization is a highly effective alternative for many people. Recent data indicate that middle meningeal artery embolization can significantly reduce the need for surgery. In some studies, up to 80% of patients treated with MMA embolization experience positive outcomes with a much lower risk of recurrence. So how does MMA embolization work? Basically, instead of opening the skull to drain the hematoma, we insert a small catheter through the wrist or through the groin and navigate using x-rays to find this middle meningeal artery. Once we get this tiny catheter into the middle meningeal artery, we inject a glue type of material to block the blood flow to the hematoma. With the blood supply cut off, the blood can start to absorb the trapped blood, reducing the pressure and symptoms over time. Because it is minimally invasive, most patients experience a quick recovery compared to surgery and can go home the next day and return to their normal activities sooner. So here's a good case. A patient showed up with the ER with a large subdural hematoma on the left side. Here's the hematoma for you to see. You can also see that the ventricle inside the brain is also being shifted to the other side and compressed. This is a coronal image which is a different way of looking at the hematoma and the shift to the other side. Then he underwent the typical surgery, which is a burr hole. It's a small school hole. The hematoma is drained and the patient is much improved. He then went home with the improvement of midline shift and also his symptoms. And then he comes back a month later with a recurrent hematoma despite having the burr hole in place. So what do you do now? Now the hematoma is better than it was and he doesn't have a shift and his symptoms are relatively mild. So we decided to do the MMA embolization. Here you can see the angiogram showing that the brain is being compressed by the hematoma there. Before we do any procedure we do a regular cerebral angiogram to make sure that the brain and the eyes have normal standard blood flow. You see you have the internal carotid artery that goes to the brain and then the external carotid artery artery which goes to the meninges. Then advance a catheter in the external carotid artery and we find the path to get to the meningeal artery. We then advanced a tiny microcatheter into the meningeal artery. The catheter is less than one millimeter and you can see the increased vascularity there. The microcatheter is then advanced even further out. Then when we know we're in the correct location we then inject this glue material called onyx that will slowly fill the little branches of the middle meningeal artery as you can see. And this is a frontal view showing that the glue is going all the way to the midline and that's what we want to see. So who should undergo middle meningeal artery embolization? Of course, every patient's situation is unique and MMA embolization isn't right for everyone. Certainly, if the hematoma is causing severe symptoms like paralysis or severe compression of the brain, the patient needs emergency surgery. However, patients who are stable or the hematoma is slowly growing over time are good candidates. I know this is a lot of information, so let's answer some of the common questions patients have. Will I feel any pain during the procedure? 
Not really. Procedures done with sedation or anesthesia, and since it's only done through an IV puncture, it's not a very painful procedure. Some patients may have a mild headache after the procedure. How soon will I see results after this procedure? Unlike the surgery, the embolization doesn't work right away, obviously, because the blood needs to be reabsorbed. So it should start being absorbed after a month or so, and we hope that there is a significant improvement in hematoma by three months. We will need to follow the hematoma with the CT scan. Are there any risks with this procedure? Yes, any procedure has risks. In this case, the most significant risk would be a very small risk of a stroke complication. You see, the middle meningeal artery actually comes from the external carotid artery, which is different from the artery feeding the brain, which is the internal carotid artery. And because it's the external, the risk of stroke is very little. It's not going to the brain. However, some patients, and it's rare, but some patients can have an abnormality that have a communication between the external and the internal carotid artery. And in these cases, if you know the, the communication is not identified, there could be a small risk of a stroke complication. So I want to summarize to you the benefits of middle meningeal artery embolization. It is minimally invasive, which means fewer risks and less recovery time. The studies show it is effective with a high success rate in treating chronic subdural hematomas and preventing recurrence after surgery. There is a lower chance of recurrence compared to traditional additional surgery and because of these benefits, MMA is especially helpful in older patients who have other medical conditions. I hope this helped to clarify what is middle meningeal artery embolization after all and why it may be a great option to treat chronic subdural hematomas.